First question, guys, Israel or Palestine? <laughs> That's great. They're both to just keep being true to themselves? So keeping okay. true to themselves. Are you from uh, Michael Bites TV? Uh, I wish. <laughs> no. Um, no, we're actually after Bites TV. We're, we're Maria Menounos' online broadcast network. But what's super interesting for me is I wonder if it's hard for you guys to do this type of stuff without any sense of irony because it's such a target of your show in a way that I'm loving. As someone who works yeah, in yeah. it, I appreciate the satire you guys are bringing. But is it hard to like earnestly answer press questions when you guys are going through events like this? <laughs> no, no. I mean, this I is didn't a first. Think about that. That's I so know. Funny. Yeah. This is our first show, obviously. So this, uh, in a very like dorky way, was all very exciting to us. So yeah, I know that I we know, should I, yeah. have like our normal irony ears yeah. up, but we're I feel the same way. I don't think. It. I think we're more just like so excited that the show's real now, and yeah. people are even remotely caring to talk to us about it. So <laughs> I am not ironic about this at all. But we it's are gonna after fun. this. We are gonna think about. It. <laughs> yeah, I apologize <laughs> to the following outlets. Um, well, the show is really fun. But before we talk about it, our fans love SNL. So I'd love to ask you guys a couple questions about it. Um, when you, I know you guys were kind of the minds behind a lot of the female driven music video parodies. Yeah. Um, do you have any that are your favorites specifically when you think back on your time there? Yes, yes we okay. do have favorites. My favorite, I guess. It, I they're mean, both not the, they're both, they're not, both the not most like, like, yeah. I really liked this one called Wish and Boot, which is a very small one. It's like a parody of a country music song. It was when Blake Shelton hosted it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was that like earnest country song all about like a boot who shows up in your time of need and gives you whatever you need. Because <laughs> I, I feel like that's like a lot of country songs yeah. are about. Yeah. But it was so dumb. It was a whole music video with like Kate and Adie and Blake Shelton like belting about a Wish and Boot. Nice. I just... It was very dumb. We could not believe we wrote it. It should not have been picked. Yeah. And then it, like every step of the way, we were like, why are they making this? Yeah. this Those is are always the favorites where you're like this very small, silly thing. And you guys have all agreed to like be at yeah. a 12 hour shoot for it and make it. This is crazy. We love it just because it is happening. The yes, fact exactly. that it exists exactly. is the reason exactly. it's, yeah, I totally get that. That's awesome. My favorite is Neurotology, which oh, yeah. was like a Scientology parody. Deep cuts. I love yeah, it. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> awesome. But we loved any of all those videos were so fun to write and those girls are all amazing. Well, that's what I loved is I feel like you guys kind of received the torch from Lonely Island, which I really appreciated, but recognize the talent of the women specifically on that show. Yeah. I feel like SNL has always been really a female show. When you think about Gilda and Molly, of course, and mm -hmm. Anna and Kristen and Maya and everyone, did you guys deliberately set out to write for the women of SNL specifically, or was that just who you felt like your voice as writers really served? Uh -huh. I think a little bit of both. I think yeah. when we came in right after we had hired, Kate got hired and then Edie got hired and we just thought they were, you know, magical so we were like we and we our sensibility yeah. really aligned with theirs but i think for both of us the show has also always been female like those are always our favorite mm -hmm. people to watch and like right, the people right. that we like start even starting with, starting with gilda from that on you were just kind of those were the people that we both yeah, loved exactly. to watch so we were lucky enough to work there and we were like we gotta keep in that female <laughs> tradition yeah, yeah, awesome. even though the yeah. guys are amazing too of course yeah it just it was really refreshing <laughs> to see you know you guys feature the women on that show i really appreciated that speaking of snl women molly's amazing in this show chris do you feel like she's kind of become like your muse <laughs> with other people well, I, I i i don't know yes yeah. i would love to work with her a thousand more times right. she's so funny and it's just like a nice normal person it yeah. has become a true because i was a fan of hers growing up so yeah. it's very surreal sometimes i will still just randomly think to myself oh my god molly's in our show it's very it's very bizarre yeah but she's so funny she's just like a kind warm person she's just a pleasure to be around she and seems that way yeah, yeah. drew tarver who's in our show mm -hmm. was saying like oh one one of the first days on set because he also loves her and he pulled us aside and was like if it ever looks like molly's just acting with a fan of hers please <laughs> tell me because sometimes he would forget to act and would just oh, be yeah. like oh my Staring god it's you <laughs> and what i love i get the impression she's not at all that kind of personality she could like uh, legitimately have of being a diva because of who she is. She seems so grounded and down to earth. Yeah. I think yeah. that's also the nice benefit of Chris having worked with her and, you know, we had worked with Beck, we had worked yeah. with other people who are in the show. We, had, we knew Drew. So there is just such a nice side effect to that, which is yeah. we knew she, she was great to work with. She's a great person. And that was great to know going into it because you just never know with casting. It could kind right. of like, it all comes down to that chemistry. And so yeah. that was a great, great to have going into it. Well, everyone's wonderful on the show. And I think the thing I appreciate and that I was most surprised by is that the show is surprisingly earnest and kind of heartwarming. I think when I read the log line, I expected a pretty cynical look yeah, at influencer yeah. culture, yeah. but the characters are kind of sweet. And like, I found myself kind of, if anything, the most cynical characters are your two leads. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear you guys kind of speak to that. Well, we thought, we thought it was, we, we said this before, but like, um, yeah, the log line sounds like it could just be these two older siblings hate their little brother and they're jealous of him right. but we thought that was a little easy we thought it would mm -hmm. be more complicated 
and fulfilling if they were a little jealous of him, but they also cared about him and they loved him and they were protective of him, that that makes it even harder for them because yeah. they can't just write him off as like, oh, this little, this little asshole. Um, but yeah, we also thought it was more interesting that Chase himself was a sweet kid. And then the cynicism was more like in the way the show portrays the way that people you know, like uh, tamp down him. his Adam's apple yeah. to keep him looking young or like dye his tongue right. pink to like make his tongue pop. Like that you see that the industry is like a little gross yeah. to him, yeah. but he himself is a, a sweet kid who's just sort of um, being moved around by other people along <laughs> yeah. for the ride and yeah. just has no idea what he's gotten himself in for. We thought that was more interesting than him being like, I'm a little shithead, you know? Yeah, it's, I have to ask, is Ken Reno's character, his name is suspiciously close <laughs> to another manager of young talent. No. No. <laughs> yes, well, but also no. It's yeah. actually named after our friend our Strader. Strader. Oh, really? Okay. He's a writer at SNL. Yes. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a writer at SNL, and but just has a name that should be a manager of a pop star. <laughs> it's it's where, perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's very weird. Well, guys, I'm loving the show. Um, I'm really excited for the rest of the season, and I'm sure many more to come. But oh, last okay. thing, anything you want fans to kind of take away from uh, this show? Yeah. Well, one thing I was just going to add that this works for too mm -hmm. is it feels like the show easily could just be all about like the pop culture as the fame, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of what that does to a person. But at its core, what we wanted to write and what we hopefully did write is just a show about a family and what they go through. And each of their stories and each of the family's stories are kind of like up against this backdrop. Yeah. Yeah. But, but at its core, that's what we were trying to put out there. And right. that's why there is a little more heart than you may expect from like a pop culture satire. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like if you took away the fame, all these characters would still be going through their same issues. Yeah. You know, Carrie would be dealing with identity and sexuality and Brooke would be trying to figure out what she's supposed to be doing for part two yeah, of her life. And, right. and yeah. you know, Pat, the mom, would still be figuring out her life as a newly single woman after her husband died. So we just, we were like, oh, all these stories could work. Let's just add this dumb pop culture fame on top yeah, of it and see like, so yeah. Well, congrats on the show, guys. I can't wait for more. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys.